internet friends. Welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Internet friends, this is Magic Brad, Synergy Cafe, and the Synergy Collaborative, and I'm here with uh, a new friend that lives out in California, but used to live up here in Wisconsin. You know where all the cows are and the cheese and all that kind of stuff. But he's down in California now, right? Is this Jeff? Yes, yes, it is. And the last name was Harmon, H A R M A N, Jeff Harmon. So how is it? Is it warm down there right now? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's in the 60s, so yeah, well. You know, 60 to 70 every day. So. It's in the 60s here, too, but it's below zero. <laughs> yeah, right. The other, other side of the zero, right. It's okay. I'm wearing short sleeves, so. Yeah, I've been to that barbecue. I used to live in northern Wisconsin, so I know what you're talking about. Yeah. You get used to it after a while. So it is what it is. So tell us a little bit about you. You, you single, married, divorced, kids, Cats, oh, I'm married. Dogs, I, have a, I have a son, which I really enjoy, and uh, he's a teenager. He's turning 15, so he's going through all the hormonal changes. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a good thing I have astrology because I can really see where he's going. He's having some issues in school. He's a good kid, though, really great kid. How long you lived out in California then? Well, I've been out here a long time. I started coming out here in the early 80s, and I was back and forth between the Chicago area and here, and then I moved out here permanently in the late 90s and then we moved to Tucson Arizona for a short time and then we came back here so what so, part of California we're right outside of Calabasas which is um, on the northern end it's where Malibu is everybody knows Malibu so okay. Calabasas is right next to there Topanga Canyon so. got it Barbie's nice from here. Malibu yeah, it's nice out here you know Malibu Barbie she's from yeah <laughs> I've been to Malibu once or twice once or twice. I remember I was doing a magic gig out there and I had to drive up it's and beautiful. it didn't seem like it was very far, but it was a little farther from LA than I thought. Anyways, you froze up for a second there, but I think we're okay. Oh, you did freeze up. Uh -oh. Come on back. We, we Come lost on back. Our connection here. I, I couldn't That's hear okay. anything you just said. That's okay. It'll be okay. That's what All people right. have to deal with these days. It isn't like the good old days when you used to be in person. And what if this happened if you're like really in person and you're sitting there talking to someone and they froze? <laughs> that can happen in person. <laughs> yeah. you get a glitch, okay. right? A so brain glitch. Tell us a little bit about what you do for an occupation these days. Well, I have two businesses. One is doing astrological consulting, and I've been doing that a long, long time. Uh, I started about 40 years ago, actually, in the mid-70s. My mother was an astrologer, and in the 60s, when I was pretty young, uh, I saw medical astrology sitting around on the table, and my mother was a nurse practitioner, and she started out as an LPN, then RN, and then moved up. And I never thought anything of it, but in the mid-70s, she started pegging my girlfriend so accurately. I said, wait a minute, this this is not mother's intuition. What are you doing here? So uh, I, I started skeptically to get into it because I didn't really believe it at all. In fact, sometimes I even still say, you know, I, I, I got to validate this. But it's been amazingly accurate. And I've had a lot of great teachers uh, in the 80s. I did a lot of research into ancient historical astrology and many different texts and found out that modern astrology is not that it's good, but it's not like the ancient stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's not because it's ancient, but Vedic astrology or it's called Jyotisha. It's absolutely amazing. I, I uh, had just called the election with Donald Trump and almost every other astrologer I know using Western or modern astrology was calling Clinton. And, and I said, I, I just couldn't see it. And of course, Trump won. And uh, there's you know, a lot of different tool sets for business in ancient astrology. Electional astrology is actually picking auspicious times at which to commence events. So I do a lot of business elections like LLCs, weddings. Uh, moving, moving into houses, signing leases, and uh, contract signing. So it's it's really a useful tool when serious business people apply it. 
And then there's another ancient type of astrology called interrogation, which is much, much different than your birth chart. It's literally asking a question. And um, like, like I said, I, I grew up in music and I was into electronics and, you know, of course, northern Wisconsin, I was cutting down trees and logging and, you know, all that stuff. Right. And uh, so it was so absolutely oblique to who I was to study astrology. And the interesting thing was is coming out to California, uh, particularly I lived in Beverly Hills for a long time and, and I, it just it found me. It, 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 I had a studio. We were doing commercials and all different types of things and industrial films. And I would always be paralleling and checking people's charts. And people would come to me and I would just do readings after readings. And then the business astrology really started kicking in in the 90s. And um, it's just been amazing. I mean, I, I've got clients all over the world. See, some people don't believe in it. And I, and I can understand why, because they don't think that it's a it's a science, but if you think about it, it's based on, on something that is very constant, and that's the movement of the things going around the sun. Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to predict the future tomorrow, the sun's going to come up. It's going to be about in the same place at about 7 o'clock. So <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that, bit, but it... About a degree per day, right? Yeah, it goes, uh, it goes out further than that when you start getting into the planets and the constellations, yeah. but it, it's like my wife does numerology, and at first you think, well, that, how can you do that? That doesn't make any sense, but... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is the same all the time. So there, there's yeah. more to it than what your average person might think. I, I don't understand exactly. it, but people that do understand yeah. it can do it. Ancient astrology is probably much more scientific by far than modern astrology. I mean, the math that is involved, particularly the stuff that's come out of Egypt and India, it's absolutely astounding. And the critics are always you know, treating it as a crystal ball and a turban. And I'm like, no, you really got to look at this first. And, you know, I was the same way, very skeptical. But I, I have to say the science that's in it, and, and you have to remember prior to the 1700s, and, and the history books do not report this, but Galileo was, astronomy and astrology were one. Sure. And I, I think that's the richness that I have found in ancient astrology is that we have a lot of texts that are available from court astrologers, particularly Europe um, and the Arabian culture. I mean, you would not believe the corpus of texts that are there where you would literally have a court astrologer telling a general or a king when to ride out of the castle to go to war or the king asking a question to uh, the court astrologer. And this is historical text and it's absolutely amazing. And I think what's astonished me is when I started looking at the people in government and politics that rely upon it. And um, I, I've got, I, I can't ever mention names, but I've got a lot of different clients who are in, in some really interesting places. And, and you, you can't use astrology to replace skill. You can't use it to replace common sense. And you certainly cannot rely upon it to do your work for you. But it's like a stop and go light or, or very analogous to like an airline pilot. When they take off at an airport, what's the first thing they're doing? They're checking the radar screen and seeing what's on the radar screen. Right. And today, especially, I'm always impressed where the, the captain will go, we're going to hit shear winds here in a few minutes. And sure enough, you hit shear winds <laughs> in exactly a few minutes. Well, that, so it, that it kind of you want to break out the coffee. That you know? kind of goes into like uh, another area of like. <gasps> people being intuitive. Some people think, well, you're a psychic reader. How can you read the future? Well, you, sure. you might not be able to read the future, but you can kind of read people. Like if you saw some guy that had calluses on his hands, dirty fingers, and then, uh, you know, he's, he was a little bit weathered in the face and stuff, you kind of get a better idea that he's probably not like a, sure. a yoga instructor. He might be more of a blue collar worker. And you, that's, so that's just the common sense of it. But some people just kind of poo poo it all off as a, it's a bunch of woo, woo but I've been around this stuff. I, I say that I've been into Christianity, Buddhism, Bradism, Scientology, Ekankar, Avatar. I've kind of touched, tasted them all, so I yeah. totally get it. So how does someone get a hold of you if they want to learn more about what you do or maybe even hire you or, or work with yeah, you? The, the best way is go to Jeff at JeffHarman.com. It's H-A-R-M-A-N.com. And uh, that's the best way. My wife works with me, and she's absolutely amazing at uh, communicating with people and explaining things. And what I love is the Internet. Um, it's allowed me to have clients all over the world. Right. I mean, they log in right to my screen. We don't do video. We actually do screen sharing, which is more powerful. 
um, because there's location astrology and they can see maps. I, I think the most beneficial thing is to be able to see the cycles in their charts. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that's always astonished me was the cycles that we all go through. Um, like speaking of children and mothers, I've, I've just really been able to add some insight in that area because psychology has always been a great interest to me. And there's such a parallel between viewing what we all go through in terms of time and cycles. Gandhi had a great statement. He said, God created time so everything wouldn't happen at once. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the astrology because it shows you in time when, when you know, you're hitting these different mile markers and goalposts in your life. And, and I think one of the things that I enjoy is helping people spiritually because it's, a, it's just a tool that allows you to give people hope and also some reality of like, hey, you're in this particular cycle, but guess what? It ends here. And, you know, it, it, it's a yep. good coping mechanism. Totally get it. My wife, again, does the numerology and she kind of sets things go. up when we do stuff. And I get it. A lot of people don't understand it, but sure. it works. So I don't care. <laughs> well, you know, the goal is really to help people. I really believe we're yeah. spiritual beings having a physical experience. And the other area that's been of great interest to me is I've been doing a lot of Vastu, which is very parallel to Feng Shui. A lot of people know Feng Shui because it's very popular, but Vastu is much more ancient. And it, it really may be the grandfather of uh, Feng Shui because it came out of India and many of the Chinese emperors had seen that. Sure. And it uses Jyotish astrology. And I, I just love its philosophy because it's the meaning of the word Jyotish means the science of the light of the soul. And it got me into this whole research area of scripture. Like you take the Western Bible it has gone through so much translations, particularly the Vulgate translations into Latin. Well, that got me, you know, in a, in a whole world. The, the ancient Kabbalah is astounding and it's very parallel to the Vedantic scriptures and the Upanishads and, and many other ancient documents. And there's so much that can be done to correct spiritual imbalances and karmic things like mm -hmm. you know I, i've gotten working with gemstones um clearing places and people there is so many secrets and and many skeptics of astrology will say well but the zodiac does not match the constellations and i go you're exactly right it doesn't it never really did and we know there's 13 constellations and all these complex things but the bottom line is is there's parallels in the spiritual matrix of, of uh, astrology to the Bible. And it's actually permutated right. in the Aramaic and Hebrew angels. You can get the name of your guardian angel from your birth chart. And uh, it's pretty, pretty deep stuff. It, it proves we're spiritual beings having a physical experience. Exactly. Well, before I ask my final question, you kind of already answered it for me when you said you're looking to help people. But I like to ask my, fav my favorite question, that is the big why question. Why is it you're doing this, and why aren't you still living in Wisconsin sawing logs? And <laughs> why are you doing this specific occupation? Well, w one of the reasons is uh, for my son. I, I wanted him to be here. We we actually believe it or not had I do a lot of conception elections for women. Uh, sometimes they can't conceive, and you know I have great respect for medicine. And sometimes I've even worked with doctors where we use astrology to conceive. So we came here. I met my wife in Malibu, actually, at a gas station. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting story. And uh, <laughs> then we ended up getting married, and we had my son, which is great. And I started pretty late in life because I was in my mid-40s when he was born. So, uh, But why I'm here is because of the film business. And um, I've always had a passion for telling stories and film. And um, it gives me a lot more latitude to do that here because the industry is here. Okay. And you know, in a lot of ways, I love to work with my hands, and I'm always building and designing things, and cameras and dollies, and so we're we're having a lot of fun in that area too. So, it's, uh, well, I'm going to sign this one off and put it in the can, as they say, and then what happens is this gets beamed up to YouTube, and then I take that embed code, put it on blogs, and then propagate it out to social media. So if you see this stuff out there, if you could like, comment, and share on it, and help uh, sure. the collaborative. Yeah, my wife's the person for that. She's. <laughs> the internet queen <laughs> wonderful okay yeah. thanks again for taking the time you got your see you got your coffee for synergy cafe i okay. do yes okay thanks again all right you bet thank you